Biobalance HealthCast, Episode 92, Health Signs from Your Body. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skin care. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. We're continuing our conversation about visible signs that people can learn to see that suggest there's a problem that mm -hmm. they should go to a physician and, and look at. Without testing. Without, it's cheap. You can just look. <laughs> without a lab test. Yeah, you know, the poets will tell you that the eyes are the, the window to the soul. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking a lot about information that you can get from looking at somebody's eyes mm -hmm. uh, in terms of a, a medical diagnosis. But before we get to the eyes, we want to concentrate on the face and head because mm -hmm. that's what you see most visibly, I think. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about graying hair. We want to talk about swelling all over. We want to talk about the lips. Uh, so so, so which one do you want to start with? Um, I hear a lot of, I'm swollen all over, mm -hmm. and I see people who are swollen all over, meaning they don't look like they've gained, that they're necessarily fat. They look but puffed they're up swollen. or bloated. They're, every, they're puffy. Yeah. They're, they're, they're really, they're, their face is all swollen up, and and their their rings are too tight so, is it so water I look retention? at that and it's water retention it's usually a female thing usually uh -huh. men don't have that unless they have heart disease so if okay. you see a man that's all swollen or swollen legs that's usually heart failure or poor vascular return to the heart I saw a picture in the paper uh, yesterday they were it was a picture about people in an old folks home and they had brought some animals in and mm -hmm. the, they, they used that kind of therapy mm -hmm. But I noticed in particular there was this one elderly lady sitting there, and, and from the waist up, she was really thin and sort of desiccated, mm -hmm. but her legs were huge. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm assuming that it's, that it's, it's a, heart failure or some other blockage. She could have a tumor in her pelvis that blocks everything from there down. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. I don't, you know, you yeah. have to think of all those different things. But if you're just looking at people and they're, and they're swollen or you're swollen all over, yeah. then general, that can be thyroid, really bad thyroid dysfunction. No thyroid cause, causes something okay. called myxedema. And myxedema is like you look like the Michelin man. Okay. okay? Yeah. So that's one thing. Another thing can be that the, that the person just eats carbohydrates. With every gram of carbohydrate, you gain a cc of water in your tissues, not in your kidneys, not anywhere else. It goes into your tissues and you start swelling. So if you have an all carbohydrate diet, you're going to swell. Never heard that before. Really? Yeah. It's true. No, I mean that's a that's a really important, interesting information and women to me. Hate to swell. So if that can be your motivation to stop eating carbohydrates as your primary food, then so be it. But um, but other swe swelling also occurs because you have too much salt in your diet. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't generally. It wouldn't be so obvious that you would see it, but heart disease is the other thing I think about. Right. Because when your heart fails, you swell all over, and your kidneys don't get enough oxygen or enough blood, and you stop, and your kidneys start decreasing production. So you can also have Because the circulation. Right. Pulls circulation. all that stuff out of your right. cells. Circulation takes it to the kidney. Evacuates it. Kidney filters it. You make pee. Yeah. <laughs> I and, mean, and that also gives simple. you information, and we'll be talking about yeah, that. Yeah, we'll be talking about P too. So, so if you see somebody that's that swollen, or you're that swollen, all of a sudden, you can try stopping the carbohydrate thing, and then you can start thinking about other illnesses like thyroid yeah. or something yeah. else. But you should ask your doctor about that. Testing has to be done to document you really have that. But you can find your disease years before just going for a primary treatment, you know, or okay. primary uh, yearly visit would find it. You may not go every year. So swelling all over is one thing, but mm -hmm. uh, I see a lot, particularly women, mm -hmm. older women, who have like a fat lump at the back of their neck. Mm -hmm. What's it's a, that? It's like, it's like a hump right on the, on the um, bottom of the cervical spine, kind of that one cervical spine that sticks out. You get a lump of fat there, and that is in general too much cortisol. So you're either stressed all the time, and you've developed this big lump, Women are caretakers. Women don't take care of themselves. They're stressed over everybody else's problems. You know all that. So they, they develop this from too much cortisol, and cortisol makes you gain weight, and, cortis and stress makes you gain weight by increasing your cortisol. So they do that, or you have a disease called Cushing's disease. Okay. And Cushing's disease gives you a moon face, a lump on the back of your, of your neck, mm -hmm. and it's, it is too much cortisol, but it's because you have, either have 
a tumor or hyperfunction in your brain that stimulates your adrenal gland or your adrenal gland just makes too much cortisol, there could be a tumor, it could just be hyperreactive or hyperplasia where there's too many cells making cortisol. Mm -hmm. So it's too much of that hormone and that's what causes these signs. If you see that, that could be something that's very serious and you should go into the doctor and say, I've got this and he'll ask you a lot of, or she'll ask you a lot of other questions and then determine what tests to do and figure out what's wrong. Mm -hmm. But that could be a sign of something that's bad and you should consider it. So what about guys who in their 40s start to go gray? How about girls who go gray? You would never know it, but they go gray before they go to the beauty before they're 40. Right, you can't see it. But there are a lot of women that I've seen, I can see their roots before they're 40. And if they have, and I actually had that, I went gray at 28. But, you know. Do you go gray all over your body at the same time? No, your hair goes gray first. Okay. <laughs> if that's what you're asking. It, it, it is what I was first. asking. Yeah, as a gynecologist, yeah. you would know. But I, then everything yeah. else becomes gray in the end. Okay. Even like if you're, even your leg hair. So if you're going to get laser and you're starting to go gray on your hair, yeah. then you need to get your legs laser, lasered if you're going to do that because you can't laser white hair. Because it doesn't have any color to yeah, burn. Yeah, you can't go in to get the, get the uh, bulb of the hair. So it has to be, maybe someday they'll have a laser that does that. We just don't have one now. Yeah. But what gray hair before 40 generally means is it's usually genetic, but it also means or could mean that you have a low B12. B12 is a vitamin that is, an, is a vitamin necessary for hair color and for neur neurologic function and repair. So all of your nerves need B12. It's in, um, it actually neuromuscular, you can have pain in your muscles because you don't have enough B12. Um, some people think they have numbness because they don't have enough. Um, so B12 is essential if you can't absorb it anymore from your stomach. And, and at some point in our lives, we all stop absorbing. But if you're early in that and you need to have B12 by a shot or under the tongue, so you put a tablet under your tongue, it dissolves, you don't swallow it because your stomach can't absorb it anymore. Then a sign for that is early graying. Hmm. And so if, I mean, B12 is important. If you have any of the other signs, numbness or tingling or, or um, just trouble thinking, that actually can be a B12 deficiency. And if you're gray early, then that's an issue. And so you should have that checked out. And they can just do a blood test and tell you. Okay, good. So let's talk about... Uh, the eyes. The eyes. The eyes have it. I always know what somebody's eyes, eye color is. I mean, I look at mm -hmm. them and I, and I mean, I don't know if that, I knew that before I was a doctor or not, I can't remember, but I always, when I meet somebody, I know what their eye color is. And then but that's partially because I'm looking at their eye color. I'm looking at the, uh, the whites of their eyes to see if it's white. I'm looking for any weird stuff around their eyes. I'm looking for their eyebrows. I mean, just inherently I was trained to do that. So as you get older, does the, pigmentation in your eyes diminish? Do your eyes get lighter and, and mm -hmm. so do. dark brown or dark blue becomes much more Paler. watery? Yeah. But so does skin usually, but testosterone is one of the hormones that helps your skin stay dark, but it doesn't do much for eyes. Okay. So, uh, so the eyes are, eyes are a little bit uh, more independent. Mm -hmm. They say that if you have that little circle around, around the outside of your iris, the colored part of your eye, that you might have high cholesterol, but it also could just be genetic because I had that and my dad had it and I don't have high cholesterol and um, my ophthalmologist always looks in, in the back of my eye and says, because you can see cholesterol on your vessels in the back of your eye. You can see diabetes inside your eye, which is why you should have an eye exam every, every year. year. And they because look. they don't mm -hmm. just look at your eye, they're looking at your vascular system in the back of your eye. Mm -hmm. Mine takes a picture. Yeah, and takes now we take pictures, which is awesome. Right. So they can compare the pictures year yes, to year. See what's changed. Instead of um, instead of doing, you know, like memory and a few notes, they take the pictures. So, so if you have high cholesterol, they'll see little yellow deposits in the back of your eye, inside your retina, and if you have. Um, if you have diabetes, I'll see notching. What about like Google eyes or, or bug eyes? Bug eyes, eyes that, that protrude, that come mm -hmm. out forward and keep the eye open are generally secondary to hyperthyroidism, a high thyroid. And that, and a specific type of hyperthyroidism. Who's that actor? 
Hump, what hump? Yeah. Remember it? Yeah, the, Marty Feldman. Marty Feldman yeah. had those kind of eyes. I can't believe I'm remembering the <laughs> names. I never remember <laughs> actors' names. But Marty Feldman has that, and he has a hump. But, I mean, <laughs> that was just part of the show. But his eyes had to be secondary to um, some type of hyperthyroidism sometime in his life. He may not still have it, right. but that, that leaves you with deposits behind your eyes that, that push you forward. So that's, right. that is a sign, and that's, you know, it may not be active, but you had it at some point. Mm -hmm. After you have hyperthyroidism with that particular disease, you then have hypothyroidism. So you can have the eyes protrude, and your thyroid burns out afterwards. I had a friend years ago that was uh, hydrocephalitic, mm -hmm. and he had a tube that was put in from his brain to mm -hmm. drain the fluid off. Mm -hmm. And as he grew, I mean, this was done when he was an infant, and as he grew, he would outgrow the tube. Mm -hmm. And the way that his parents or the docs would know is it just almost instantly his his uh, eyeballs would would be like blood red uh, right. because of the pressure pressure behind so, the eye right so, so if you see somebody with it's not bloodshot hydro eyes hydrocephalus you would know you would have since right you were, right yeah usually no. there's hydrocephalus of adulthood but that would be something you'd have to look at but the ophthalmologist could tell what the issue was because mm -hmm. glaucoma can cause that too so if you look at somebody's eyes and they're all really red, and then it's oftentimes high pressure in your eye, and that's glaucoma, and that can make you blind. I mean, that's huge. You need to see somebody. Right. Usually it's in both eyes, but it could be in just one. Well, in my I mean, eyes, they check for that emergency. every year, too. I mean, that, they take yeah. a, a picture of the back of my eye, and then they puff that air in to But not check everybody, the you know, all of you out there, not everybody gets an eye exam every year, and you right. should. You can imagine, you didn't know he was looking at all these things or she was looking at all these things. No. But it's very important. It tells about your whole health. Right. And you have to go in every year. So, so what about, like, you see some people that have, like, little bumps or balls yellowy deposits or, yeah they're like little like little blot blobs that stick out yeah. of yellow things around their eyes or little dots of yellow things uh -huh. that is um that's cholesterol that's high cholesterol oh. high triglycerides and it has to be pretty high to do that but you can tell if somebody has usually it's a genetic high cholesterol usually their parents one of their parents had it but it's really hard to treat I think that's probably the best indication for cholesterol medications because no amount of diet, no amount of hormones, no amount of thyroid is going to make that, that return to normal. But that's your sign that you, you know, the guy that says that's your sign. Ron White. Yeah, I know. that's right. There's your sign. <laughs> that's your sign that I'm you need to go involved. in and get a yeah. cardiologist. Yeah. You have to get a cardiologist <laughs> if you have that because that's a sign that you have familial hypercholesterolemia or hypertriglycerides. So it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. You should see somebody for that. Okay. And so, so that's, that's really attention. fun to see across the room and go, oh, I should tell that person. They probably already know, though. And they can't do much about it. So um, let's see. Yellow eyes, we talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. And yellow eyes have to do with bilirubin, and, and that's a blocked, it's a blocked gallbladder. Wow. Yeah. Or it could be your pancreas, or it could be liver disease. So that, that's something that you need to take care of pretty quick once you yeah. see it. So the key here is that your eyes are not normally yellow, and you don't have to be a physician. You have to go see one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you just have to have have the reason to see the physician by looking at your eyes and go, "Whoa!" Yeah. What the? Yeah. yeah. And but and you and you can see yellow if you pull this down. You can mm -hmm. see yellow, and you can also see if somebody's anemic just by looking under here. I did some. I did a lot of camps. Mm -hmm. You know where I was the doctor at the camp, and I took trauma training to do that. Okay. So anemic means what? Anemic. Oh, I'm sorry. It means you don't have enough red blood cells red. and enough iron. Right. So I would. I had to learn all the ways you could figure out somebody's illness without having one machine or anything besides an otoscope or an ophthalmoscope. So I'd be looking at kids' eyes to see if they're anemic when I would run right. a test, right. you know, here to see if you're anemic. But I, I could tell by looking at their eyes, it's really pale, pale pink on the inside of your eye if you're anemic. And so I could make the diagnosis that way. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of things. I did have an ophthalmoscope or optom excuse me, otoscope, so I could look in their ears. And all these kids, there are so many kids with like tympanic membranes. You know, you look in and it's beautiful in most kids. And then there's this big hole in the ear and you know that they're partially deaf huh. because there's a hole in their tympanic membrane. It's like a, a drum, your eardrum, and it takes in all of the sounds that you hear and you can listen. So mm -hmm. in any case, I learned a lot of this stuff when I went to camp with the, with the teenagers and was examining them and taking care of them all, all without any backup. It's kind of like being in the middle of Africa or in the middle of a third world country. You don't have anything else. 
Now, eyebrows? Eyebrows and eye eyelids that droop. Okay, so eyebrows, when you don't have eyebrows out here, your eyebrows look like that, <laughs> and you do have eyebrows in the center, right. then the only thing that causes that, besides a bad waxing job, is, um, is low thyroid. So there's, I mean, when I see that, somebody comes in, if their labs look normal and they've got that, then I start asking them all the thyroid questions. Well, and that's actually true because she saw that on me when she first met me. And, and once we became <laughs> acquainted enough, that it was appropriate <laughs> to ask because she's a gynecologist and I wasn't seeing her for that. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no. And she said, you have this thing and I want you to have your thyroid checked. And, and he's like, what? <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> What do my eyebrows have to do with my thyroid? Yeah. But that's one of that's one of those little tricks. Right. So so look at your thigh look at your eyebrows to see if your thyroid's okay. Okay. So that and then I have an eye droop. And so I'm pretty I, I have I don't even remember, I guess it's this eye. You can tell. But one of my eyes droops and when I get tired it droops more. But it's 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 a genetic thing that's passed along in the family. When I was a resident, all the internal medicine doctors would come up to me and go, <gasps> You have myasthenia gravis. There's something wrong with you because I was up 36 hours and I was tired. And so my left eye would be almost closed. The ones that didn't come up and say, you're winking at all the patients. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah. Popeye. So, I mean, it really, myasthenia gravis is a disease that affects your neuromuscular junction. So the neuro, neurons and the muscles. And you're, the easiest way to explain it is you run out of the chemical that makes your muscles contract, okay? So they wear out, they get tired. You cannot re-accumulate uh, this, this neuro to muscular transmitter. So over a day, you're, you get more and more weak. You can't lift things. So you can't droop. grip. All of your muscles feel really tired, so your eyes start drooping. And usually, sometimes it's one eye more than the other, but it's usually one eye that's drooping more. It's kind of like an old rubber band that just stays stretched out. It right, doesn't... right. But it's a, it's a chemical rubber band. And, it, and then you go to sleep. You let it reaccumulate because you're not moving around. And people who have this need medication, of course. But they also need a lot of rest during the day. Right. And they can't have, they don't have stamina. Mm -hmm. They can't go work out. And then and and continue to work out like somebody would for an hour right. without just being a, a puddle on the floor. So that's important to see. I don't have it. You can look at all my family pictures. Everybody's got one of those eyes. Yeah, it's really funny. It's an so Italian it's a genetic thing. Genetic issue. You've seen it in The Godfather. Is that Mediterranean. Yeah, thing? I mean, in a, if you look, if you look, I've seen it more in Italians than anybody else. Okay, yeah, but you've been it around more Italians. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It looks kind of sexy on some of them. Doesn't look sexy on me. <laughs> Just looks like I'm sick. So, um, so that's that's that. So now we're going to talk about everybody poops. Everybody poops. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> our favorite. <laughs> well, that's the title of a child's book, and we recommend that to families to when they start to be concerned about uh, muscle control and uh, and evacuation issues. But you know, when you have an infant and you're changing diapers and you're cleaning them all the time, as a parent you are pretty intimately involved with their poop and with their pee mm -hmm. and you notice if it smells or if it's solid, if it's runny, if they have diarrhea, you, you know these things. Uh, there's still value in knowing those things. And yeah. when you go to the doctor, the doctor will ask you, oh, are you noticing this about your poop? Are you noticing this about your urine? And I'm always nonplussed by that. It's like, I don't look. And they say, well, look. Well, look, yeah. <laughs> you, know? you should be watching that. You should be checking that and stuff out. And then I out. get asked a lot. Women ask about that a lot. They're like, mm -hmm. okay, so what color should your poop be? I'm like, what did you eat? You know, if you ate green. So do women ask doctors about yeah. that? Or do women sit around and talk about it? They that? talk about it, too. Oh, my God. If I went out with a bunch of guys, I'm like, so well, what yeah, color Well, yeah, guys, your... don't talk about that. That's because we're <laughs> talking your, about it for you. Does your poop float? <laughs> 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 okay, so floating poop, let's go to that. Yeah. Floating poop can be from several reasons. It can be that you've lost a lot of weight and fat is being fat jumped comes, out of your body. Comes out of your body through your poop. Wow. It doesn't come out through your pee, which I thought somebody asked me who should have known. Uh -huh. It doesn't come out through urine. There's no there's no fat in your urine. But it does come through your bowels. So if you take uh -huh. ally, ally is a weight loss drug that takes all the fats out of your food. You have yellow, smelly, floating poop. It's disgusting. However, it does work. 
but you can't do it forever because you don't absorb your vitamins if you have that kind of a, of a um, evacuation of all the fat through your intestines. It goes too fast when it slides, so it goes fast. <laughs> yes, it does. But if, but if you have floating poop, then you may have a malabsorption disease. If you're not doing these other things, right. you know, right. if you're not dieting drastically, you may be malabsorbing um, fats. And that means none of the fatty vitamins are getting in. That's a vitamin D, A, uh, e, all of the re repair vitamins are just being pooped out of your body, and it's hard to it's hard to be healthy then. So that would mean you'd have to you'd have to uh, go to your doctor and get tested and get a so, stool sample. So we're talking about a pattern over time. We're not talking about you know a binge weekend. No, or something. we're talking about a consistent. I mean, it has to be there over two weeks, as, maybe as over a, a month. Consistent condition. Yeah. So if you if you notice that it's floating in the toilet once, yeah. don't overreact. Don't panic. No, no, no. You have to it, you have to okay. see it over and over again. I mean, okay. I you think could have had a huge worse. fatty Because I would, I would be like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. It's not once. It's a consistent problem, and I'm talking about consistent problems all the way through here. And by the way, this isn't something you would see, but most people have one bowel movement a day. Mm -hmm. Some people up to three to four. It's not diarrhea, and it just seems to be normal for them. And some people don't have a bowel movement for three days, but more than three days is not normal. Okay, so but up to three days, especially with young children. Yeah, again, yeah. you worry about that. Have, have they pooped? Have they pooped? And What's if they your... don't, it could be thi low thyroid. Yeah. Okay, so it could be some other metabolic problems or dehydration. So, black poop. Mm -hmm. Now, this is interesting because because if you have black poop, it could be the iron in your vitamins. And it could be nothing. So it could, iron and prenatal vitamins, everybody's poop's black. They all come in and say, why is my poop black? Because they're taking iron because they're pregnant. So too much iron in your food that your body's not metabolizing? Well, it would be, it isn't even, it would be hard to eat that much iron. It would be a vitamin or a, a okay. treatment. All right. So it would be a supplement. It would be very concentrated. So that can turn it black, but get this, it's not black and tarry in consistency now. I don't even want to talk to you about how you find out what the consistency is, but you can kind of <laughs> guess by looking at it. If it looks tarry, that could be blood from your stomach. I mean, up high, stomach, not intestines. It has to, it turns black by going through your intestines. So when they ask you, is there blood in your stool? That means, do you have hemorrhoids? Because if you see red and there's streaks of red, I shouldn't be drawing it like that. There's, there's streaks of red, then that's probably hemorrhoids because that's fresh blood. Okay. Hemorrhoids are right down out near the outside. Right. So that would give you red blood. But if you have blood up higher, higher. Mm -hmm. then that's from your stomach or your small intestine, then it's gonna turn black. Then when they do a guaiac test, where they ask you to, to get some um, of your bowel movement, put it on a card, send it in, or they right. do it for you. Right. Um, then they can tell if they have microscopic blood in there. So they can confirm, and that would be from um, a, uh, an ulcer or some other kind of a well, polyp. Or people that overdose on aspirins. You take yeah. too many aspirins on an empty stomach, you're going to get capillary bleeding in mm -hmm. your stomach, right. and then your poop will turn black. Right, but you'd have to do that consistently. Yes, yes. So irritation in the stomach that actually uh, takes the top layer off and, and causes it to bleed. Mm -hmm. So, so that would be something that you would look for that would be a, an illness. And then white color of, the, of a bowel movement is a malabsorption sign, and it's not normal, and your poop should not be white, and you need to see a GI doctor or your internist for that. Okay. So that's something that's... What, there's something you're not absorbing? You're not absorbing a lot of different nutrients, but it's, it's a sign that your bowel is, is diseased and you right. need to have that taken care of. So if you don't have your own personal Mandarin, like the, the last emperor of and China. And we hope you don't. Then you need to be looking at this stuff. But if, <laughs> I had somebody bring in their poop to me. Now I'm a gynecologist. Oh, you told me this story. I'm a gynecologist, I mean. Brought it in a jar. In a jar, in a clear jar. But you We had don't know it, how they collected it, but they but had it in a yeah, jar. Yeah, and it was in the jar, and it, yeah, I don't know how she got it or why she did it, but, um, but she brought it in in like a little, a, a cute little bag from Neiman. So I thought it was, I'm like, my, my nurse practitioner, she brought it to her and she said, I thought it was a present for me. I look at it and it's stool. And it's like a big lump of stool and there's things moving in it. Worms? Worms. 
worms, okay? <laughs> I know. that, And <laughs> that's not normal, by the way. You know, there are things about this conversation. I could not be a physician. <laughs> I'm sorry. You probably all have turned this off by now if you're grossed out. I apologize, but this is stuff that we have to think about. Well, I didn't want to be a physician that day. <laughs> I don't deal with that kind of stuff except in delivery, and then I just kind of ignore it. But, yeah. you know, this is this is a big deal, and, and I do not like parasites. I don't like parasites of any kind. They just right. kind of give me the itches and creepies. So I looked at this, and I said, you know, whatever she's eating or doing, there's something wrong, and she needs to go see a GI doctor <laughs> and get this eradicated because I don't even know what to treat her with. Right. We had to first, you have to first determine what it is, then the drug for it. But she had gotten a weight loss drug from China. Over the internet. Over the unregulated, internet. Unregulated, unlicensed. And no, and no American words, no English on it. It was all Chinese. It came, and she just took it. It's kind of like playing Russian roulette. And she lost 20 pounds because these worms ate her food. I'm not kidding. It worked. She yeah. lost weight. But then what it cost her to get rid of the worms? Oh, oh, she was so sick and she couldn't stop losing weight and she was it was awful. Yeah. Oh yeah. She was a sweet gal too. I mean, you know, you just go, Oh my gosh, one little thing. You make one mistake and that's it. So so we focused on a lot of things. There's still other things, uh, you know, snot. <laughs> His pee, favorite subject. Coughing, <laughs> phlegm. Uh I guess at the end of the day, the, the observation simply is that there are things to observe. There mm -hmm. are things that you should look at, that you should know, that at the very least just simply say, this is atypical, this is a concern, go to a dermatologist, go to a physician, have mm -hmm. some tests run, and find out. Because your body is giving you cues and information that may save your I life. I have an addendum, though. All right. I have, there's two important things to know about urine. If urine's dark, you're not infected. If it smells bad and it's dark, you're not infected, you're dehydrated. You need water. I get that asked about every other day. Okay. If urine is frothy, bubbly, and sweet smelling, then you have diabetes and you may even have a part of a type one diabetes where you need insulin. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be frothy, it shouldn't be sweet smelling, and, it shouldn't, and then it's also dilute. It's very, very pale yellow. So if you have that, you need to go to your doctor and get checked for diabetes. Okay. So that's, a, that's just a very important, and it's one of the things that I don't think anybody knows. So as I used to say when I was teaching school, pay attention. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.